and welcome, I'm your code monkey, and here it is, all the advanced lectures in my complete c -sharp course are running right now. I just published the last 22 advanced lectures. These cover topics like async programming, unsafe code, nullables, multithreading, and a bunch more. So this update makes the course fully complete. It starts from the absolute basics, like teaching how exactly does code run line by line and what is a variable, then teaches some more intermediate topics, things like events and interfaces. And now finally, the advanced section, this one teaching lots of very interesting c -sharp features that you might not know about. In total, in the complete course, there are 97 lectures, 587 frequently asked questions, 567 quizzes, and 177 interactive exercises. This really is very complete. I put my 10 years of C-sharp knowledge in this one course. So if you know absolutely nothing about C-sharp and you go through this course, and if you do it by taking it slowly, bit by bit, making sure you understand everything along the way, if you do all of that, then by the end, you will have gained an awesome skill set. Now, personally, I love C-sharp. It's a really great language. I really love the syntax, and it can be used for just about anything. You can make games, you can make console apps, websites, you can do things in AI, IoT, robotics, and really anything. So I definitely believe you should learn the language, and you should learn everything the language can do. And also, like I mentioned in the very beginning when I first announced this course, my goal for this was to have free versions over here on YouTube. But actually, before that, let's just see a quick overview of the advanced lectures. We're going to start off with an interesting advanced topic that I actually only started seriously using just recently, it's reflection. I had to learn this myself in order to make the exercise for the companion project. Reflection is how you can dynamically inspect your code and work with it without directly calling any functions or reading any fields. Next is going to be a simple but interesting one. It's how you can make some function extensions. This allows you to extend a type with more functions without having to modify that type itself. This is really useful when you don't have access to the type itself, when you don't have source code access. Then we're going to learn about static constructors. These are kind of like the normal constructor, but they run just once for the entire class. After that, we're going to learn about the type of keyword. This lets us get a system.type object of any type that we have. This is very important to use alongside reflection. Then in lecture on name of, this one helps you get a string name for some kind of type. This is really useful to help you avoid strings in your code. Next is the size of operator. This one lets you get the size of your types. Like for example, you can see how an int is four bytes, a short is two bytes, and a byte is just a single byte. So this helps you know how much memory your code will use. Then in lecture on default, simple and very useful way to get the default value of some type. If you do default of an int, you get zero. If you do default of a bool, you get false. If you do default of some object, you get null and so on. So using this keyword is much better than hard coding some default values. After that, we're going to have a lecture on expression bodied members. This is a really interesting, very compact way to write simple short functions. There's no need to write all the usual function boilerplate code. This one is basically just a lambda. After that, we're going to see a lecture on records. This is a super simple way to create immutable types to organize your data. Next, we're going to learn about the null conditional operators. This is how you can easily test for null before doing something, like for example, before firing off an event. Then in lecture on the null coalescing operator, this one lets you quickly test against null, and if it is null, return a default value. After that, we're going to learn about the ternary conditional operator. This is an excellent, super compact syntax for making a very simple if. You have the condition with an if and an else, so it's all very tiny, very useful. Next, we're going to learn about the main function in a console app and how to pass in some command line arguments. This is a really important one because there are many interesting programs that you can build that don't need any kind of UI. So a simple console app that you can control with some command line arguments, that one is always going to be an excellent option. Then in lecture on nullable, this is how you can make any type support null. Even value types like int or bool, you can make them nullable to support null. This can be much better than having to predefine some special value, something like minus one. Next, we're going to see a lecture on span. This is a super efficient way to do logic on arrays or slices of arrays. Importantly is how this does not actually create any new data. It does not cost any new memory, does not create a new object. This one is basically just a pointer, meaning it is insanely performant. Then in lecture on bitwise operators, this is how you can work with individual bits of data. In this lecture, I'm also going to teach the basics for how binary works. Next, we're going to learn about enum flags. This is how you can turn your enums into bit masks, which then allows you to make some interesting combinations. Then in lecture on pre-processed directives, with this, we can give orders to the compiler itself. We can define symbols and include or not include some code in the compilation. Next, in lecture on the keywords ref, out, and in. These are really useful. They help you get more data out of a function than just a single return type. And they also help you work with types as references, even if they are value types. After that, we're going to learn about data boxing. Now, this does not have anything to do with punching people. It's really all about putting data inside a box. 
This is an interesting property based on the fact that everything in C-sharp extends from object. Next, we're going to learn about dynamic. This is a really interesting, very advanced topic. With dynamic, we can work with types that don't actually exist. So we can define something as dynamic and call functions or read fields on that type, on that object, even if they don't really exist. That validation logic is only going to run at runtime, not at compile time. So this dynamic, this is really useful, especially when working with data you got from some kind of web server. Then a lecture on the class indexer. With this, you can make your own custom types support access through an index, just like a list or array. You can add whatever logic you want and make it read only or read write. Next is a lecture on attributes. With this, you can add metadata to your code. Then that metadata can represent whatever you want. You can use reflection to analyze it and do something to it. After that is a lecture on anonymous types. Really interesting, quick way of organizing some data without having to first define a specific type. You just do new, open up the curly braces, and it will automatically create a generated type. Related to that is the next lecture on tuples. These are very similar. They also allow you to organize some data without first defining a type. In this lecture, I also cover the differences between anonymous types and tuples. Next is going to be a lecture on using I disposable. This is a really interesting code block and interface that helps you make sure you don't forget any kind of cleanup code. After that, we're going to learn how to create custom override operators. Using these, we can add support for our own classes to do things like addition or multiplication. We can define the logic of what exactly it means to add two custom player classes together, and also define the logic for comparing two custom types, meaning defining the logic for what exactly does it mean to do an equals. Next is a lecture on link. With link, we can easily do query operations on any collection of data, whether it be a list or array or some XML or some kind of database. We grab that data, then we can query for some conditions and select just a few elements. We can sort some things, we can do a union and so on. If you're familiar with SQL, then link will be quite familiar. Afterwards, we're going to learn about WinForms. This is how you can make visual c -sharp programs. You have your toolbox and you just drag and drop the components. Here, I'm also going to talk about the other visual program tools, things like WPF and .NET MAUI, as well as how Unity itself doesn't have to be used just for making games. You can make normal applications with Unity. Next is going to be a lecture on DLL import, the library import, how to use extern and work with the Windows API. So this one is going to be a great lecture to learn how to interact with external libraries. Then a lecture on asserts and unit testing in general. With this, you can validate your own code to make sure everything is behaving exactly as intended. Next is going to be a lecture on writing unsafe c -sharp code and working with pointers. Now this one, this is a very, very advanced topic. Technically, if you know what you're doing, you can make some impressive stuff with unsafe code. But c -sharp has a safety for a reason, so definitely only use this wisely. Then we're going to learn about asynchronous programming. Specifically, how to use async, await, and task. This is how you can have some code that takes some time, like for example, contacting a web server, and keep waiting for a response without blocking your program. This is extremely important in making sure your program feels nice and responsive. After that comes a super important advanced lecture. This one is all about multi-threading. This is how you can take advantage of all the cores in the CPU to make them all do work at the exact same time. When done properly, you can get some insane performance improvements. But it is also very, very easy to make mistakes. So this one is very much the definition of an advanced topic where you must know exactly what you're doing. So yep, that's everything we learned in the advanced section. As you can see, there's lots of really interesting topics. All the lectures are already available. So if you already have the course, just open the page and you'll see the new lectures right away. And if you don't have the course, you can pick it up with a link in the description. Or alternatively, like I mentioned many months ago when I first announced this course, the goal was to have a premium version and a free version. Basically, if enough people bought the premium version, if so, then I would make the video lectures free here on YouTube. And yep, I'm happy to say that it did surpass my thresholds. That is why both the beginner and the intermediate version, those are already free over here on YouTube. So now I'm launching the advanced section on the premium version and the free video containing the video lectures for the advanced section that will be coming out in one month. Now, if you can afford the premium version, that's a great option. It includes the companion project, which contains a ton of frequently asked questions, a bunch of quizzes, and importantly, some very interactive exercises. These truly help you learn by doing instead of just watching videos. Then obviously the premium version has no ads. You also get access to the private Discord community and the weekly private live streams where I answer all your questions. So if you can't afford the premium version or if you already have it, then that's awesome. I hope it helps you a ton. It's linked in the description. But if not, then that's okay. You can already go watch the free beginner and intermediate sections for free here on YouTube and the free YouTube video with the advanced section that will be coming out in one month. Now I'm really happy with how this course came out. It covers lots of topics and I think it actually has a really nice smooth learning curve. 
So wherever you are in your learning journey, beginner, intermediate, or advanced, I am sure you can learn something from this. I really do love C-Sharp. I think it's an excellent language. I think it's a very valuable skill to have. It really gives you the power to build so many awesome things. So I truly hope that this course, both the free and the paid versions, I really hope it helps you gain that very valuable skill. All right, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.